Hey guys, KF7IJZ here, coming to you with what should be a relatively short video. I want to talk today a little bit about my emergency solar generator, what I'm, what I'm now referring to as my solar power module. Um, I've had it now for about two years. I've had a chance to use it in the field quite a bit, and um, I've realized it's time to move on to the next version. And over the last couple months, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time starting to think through and design and assemble the materials to build version two of the box and i kind of want to go through lessons learned and then some of the uh, design considerations that are driving what we're going to do in version two so for those who don't know my previous um battery box was built using two 20 amp hour uh, AGM batteries and they were installed in a an MTM spud 7 case or spud 6 I can't remember but it's a, a lightweight plastic um, slightly water resistant box and uh, to kind of serve as as charging facilities for the box I installed a sun saver uh, maximum power point tracking charge controller with a pretty nice little uh, display battery monitor through several other gadgets in there, um, which you can see, including uh, a rig runner and a West Mountain Radio power check. And basically, this is the unit that, that serves as the prototype for my portable operations. Probably the, the best test of this box um, in the last year was centered around Field Day uh, 2013, where this is the box that I relied on exclusively um, to provide power for that event. Now, some of the lessons that I learned... Now, first and foremost, this box was heavy, weighing in at over 30 pounds. Uh, this thing was not light uh, to carry around, lug around, um, etc. It, it was a bit unruly. Um, second of all is that the, the handle was relatively fragile. As, as the box would warm up, um, it would kind of uh, start to feel like it was going to separate as you lifted the box and uh, with all the weight in it. And so it, it was always a point of failure that I never quite trusted, but, but constantly just had to be careful and, and, and work around. Um, the, the box, while water resistant, was certainly not waterproof, um, even when closed. Now, I never had this box out in the rain, but it's just one of the things that, um, and seeing some of the conditions that we've operated in, which actually last field day 2013 was a good example where it poured rain on Sunday. It would be nice knowing that I have a box that is uh, completely waterproof and, and can be safely uh, set outside when, com when closed, um, you know, to survive any weather conditions should they happen. Um, some charge controller issues that I ran into with the Sun Saver is, um, first of all, there was some uh, radio frequency interference generated, uh, certainly audible, uh, 17 meters on up. There was um, a little signal that, that appeared about every uh, 50 kilohertz or so. Uh, that was actually rather quite loud uh, and annoying. The other thing is that <clears throat> this battery accidentally got loft, left off the battery tender, and I was surprised to come back to find that the battery was uh, below 10.5 volts, and the only thing that was connected um, was the charge controller. And I think uh, it didn't really do a good enough job of trying to protect the battery, uh, disconnect itself, or anything. And I'm not saying that it necessarily should have, but it's definitely... Um, it showed that my box was not as fault tolerant as I had originally hoped. Um, the battery protection in general, as I mentioned, uh, was not fault tolerant in the sense that um, there was not any type of a, a disconnect. There was nothing uh, in the box that once a voltage got to a certain point that it would disconnect everything in an effort to save the batteries. You know, and, and speaking of the batteries, as I mentioned, um, I used two 20 amp hour uh, AGM lead acid batteries. And over the last couple of years, as I've demonstrated in my videos and, and through experience, even though they're rated at, um, at 20 amp hours that at the end of the day, uh, lead acid batteries, the, the, the more current you draw from them, uh, the lower the overall capacity. And, uh, given that the 50% state of charge is approximately right around 12 volts, a little bit less, um, and that's about when our radio stopped working right off the bat, even on receive only, you only get half the, um, the energy or sorry, half the amp hour rating that the, the batteries are rated at. So, um, there's inefficiency there. And then finally my battery monitoring for this box was, you know, I say inadequate, but really it was non-existent. I, I had <laughs> the power check basically, uh, to serve as an amp hour counter, uh, which was some indicator of the health and state of charge of the battery, but not really, um, not really necessarily the, the most accurate way to go in the long run. 
So before setting out to, to start building uh, Box version 2.0, I, I wanted to define some, uh, some requirements and some uh, design guidelines that really were informed um, by the lessons learned. You know, the, the box I did last time, I, I, I didn't really give um, a ton of thought to. I mean, I, I just kind of grabbed components that I'd seen other people use and throwing them uh, and, and threw them together. So when we look at, um, at box 2.0, um, these are items that definitely are, are requirements in order to, to consider it a success for me. And first and foremost, of course, is uh, lighter and therefore more portable. Um, you know, ultimately, actually, uh, all of these requirements will directly drive uh, decisions that I have made or will make um, going forward. Um, lighter, of course, is, is just important overall to improve portability. But also, lighter um, lighter improves portability, but lighter also allows you to... Uh, increase the same amount of energy carried or transported for the same amount of weight. Um, more weather protection and a better case in general, better quality case in general, uh, definitely going to be a requirement for version 2.0. Um, as the first one was, it does still need to be solar chargeable. Um, I'd like to add more direct services, and I have on here things like a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and, um, you know, USB sockets, uh, 2.1 amp versions. And, and really, I mean, these things were, were easy add ons for the previous box, but this time I'd like them to, to actually be built in. So I don't have to carry around extra dongles or, or extra things. Um, a true battery state of charge monitoring, just like your laptop does. Um, it's a technique called Coulomb counting where it's actually counting, uh, real quantities of electricity. They're going into and out of the battery, uh, like I said, it's the same thing that your laptop does uh, to calculate state of charge, and um, there are there are things on the market available that that will do that for us. Um, I also want true battery uh, protection this time, so um, over discharge protection, low voltage disconnect, over charge uh, protection. Um, these things really are going to be vital to to ensuring the health and, and safety of the battery. And then finally, no radio frequency interference. This was something that was a complete surprise um, with the Sunsaver Maximum PowerPoint Tracker uh, charge controller. But definitely we need to make sure that the box I'm building to power my portable radio experiment, or, or excuse me, my portable radio exploits, uh, certainly does not give off radio frequency interference. So lessons learn um, inform our requirements, and our requirements ultimately inform our design features uh, for the Solar Power Module 2.0. Um, based on the requirement to have something that is lighter, uh, definitely that points us towards using lithium iron phosphate batteries. And, and in surveying the landscape, um, I think the cost uh, is, is finally to a point where it is affordable enough. Um, it's still not as cheap as, as sealed lead acid batteries, but for what you're getting, I, I think it's an incredible value. Um, that price is just continuing to improve uh, as time goes on. I definitely decided that this time I, I would build this into a Pelican case of some sort, uh, which to me is pretty much the gold standard of portable, rugged, lightweight, um, plastic waterproof cases. Definitely would stay with a maximum PowerPoint uh, tracking charge controller um, this time. I mean, that, that's a feature that's kind of a no-brainer for getting the uh, the most possible power out of your solar panels. And, and that's important, especially if you're going with smaller panels. I mean, if, if you're able and fortunate enough as I am to have um, solar panels that probably far outstrip your ability to drain energy, um, you know, you, you really need to squeeze every last bit of efficiency out of the system if you don't have that. Um, this time I will definitely be adding a low voltage disconnect, and this is pretty much, um, excuse me, an absolute must-have, uh, given that I'm going with lith the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Because um, lithium batteries, if, if you over-discharge them, they, it, it, it's a lot more difficult, a lot more, um, I, I want to say difficult, it's probably, uh, you have a lot more to lose. They're, they're not as fault-tolerant to being over-discharged um, as lead-acid batteries. I, and I, I stumble there about making a definitive statement just simply because I have not over-discharged one and then try to charge it back and see what, what the net effect is. But all indication and everything that I read is that it's bad and you can permanently damage um, your cells. This time I want a true um, battery state of charge monitor. And as I'll show in a moment, I've identified two commercial offerings um, that should meet that that requirement. I actually thought about trying to build something with an Arduino, um, and I just, 
<laughs> it's one of those things I really should learn and experiment and maybe I will. Um, but at this point, the, uh, my, my availability of funds to, to purchase this outstrip my time to be able to design and, and test and, and deploy one. Um, and then also I, I want, uh, service sockets, uh, to be waterproof. Yeah, one of the things I'm toying around with is, is being able to leave the case closed, um, in order and then still being able to plug in, um, you know, your, your connections for the solar panel, your connections for your radio. And then in this case, the, the 12 volt and USB sockets as well. So if I, if I can do that where I can keep the case closed and use waterproof sockets, um, externally, I, I think that would be a very desirable feature this go around. So that's it for now. Um, this was really an introduction to the design philosophy of, of what will be going into uh, version two of the power module. So um, I just wanted to make this video relatively short to kind of demonstrate um, some of the, again some of the lessons learned, some of the things that um, that have become important to me in using my old box uh, that will inform what I do for the next one. Um, you know, truth of the matter is I've actually been working on the second version now for about. Uh, three, four months, I've been slowly accumulating materials. And uh, in my next video, I will go through um, basically all the, the construction elements. I, you know, what I've, what I've been able to figure out so far and what I haven't. Um, and I, I haven't figured everything out just yet. Um, but I've certainly figured out enough um, that I actually was able to use this, uh, the prototype, if you will, at field day and while it's not completed didn't have all the components um, the battery itself the lithium iron phosphate technology certainly performed uh, incredibly well and everybody was very happy um, given that I've gone from like a, a 30 35 pound uh, box that effectively only provides 20 ish amp hours of, of usable radio power um, down to something that weighs a little bit less than 15 and provides uh, nearly 40 honest amp hours of, uh, of, of performance. So stay tuned uh, for part two um, in this series, probably going to be a two or three part series. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, several of you here lately have actually been sending some really great questions, uh, and I've, I've really enjoyed getting to trade emails with you and, and provide input. Um, and I've also enjoyed some of the things that, that, that you guys have introduced me to. Uh, so please keep it up. And as always, if you have not and want to know more about solar panel, uh, sorry, solar power for amateur radio or other uses, just click the little subscribe link down there because this would not be a YouTube video were it not for a personality requesting people to subscribe. So 73, everybody, um, have a wonderful evening. This is KF7IJZ.